Oh. Please set disc card. And here comes Luigi. I turn it off. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am the Moy Chicken, and welcome to a new series. Today, we are going to be playing... Doki Do- er, <clears throat> Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic. This, uh, is a game that I have- I, like many people, have heard of for many years, but I've never played it before. And I recently got access to a bunch of FDS games, and so I'm like, well, let's play it. So we're gonna- we're gonna go through it, because this- it's- it's always just been such a mystery- look! Look at this! So, um, I, I guess I should start by, by, uh, explaining the history of this. So, this game, which I will refer to as Doki Doki Panic instead of Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic, because that's a mouthful, um, is a, a game that was produced by Nintendo, um, for a, a company. Um, I want to say it was like a, like a TV company or some such, um, and uh, it was it was supposed to be like a commercial tie-in. So the protagonists that you see in this game are um, the like mascots of that whatever it was. Uh, ooh, hey, a lamp, very nice. Um, and so they they basically contact Nintendo and they're like, hey, can you make us a game? We want to use it for marketing purposes, and you know we will distribute it like like normal. And so N Nintendo's like, okay, yeah, sure. And so this game, I believe, was produced by like. You know Miyamoto and the uh, the good old Mario team, um, but it uh, it was uh, it was re I think this one was released after Super Mario Brothers Two came out in Japan because Super Mario Brothers Two in Japan, of course, is very different from Super Mario Brothers in America. It is a uh, it's like a drastically different game that's very similar to the first game, and it, over here we got a game that looks very much like this, but is not this. We got a game called Super Mario Brothers 2, but it was not in Japan. Now, this is a bomb. Okay. And... BOMB! I <laughs> like it's B-O-M. As a clown head. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, pu I pulled up like... Is it like a cactus? Look at its head! Oh, it's weird! Go... go uh, oh, it's just moving along! That was weird. Okay, anyway. Um... Yeah, so they they produced like this this uh this game and um it was very successful in Japan, but it was just kind of like a one-off. And they produced it for the for the FDS, which was a um it was like a format that didn't really uh it, it was like designed to make games not not on the cheap, but make games more afford affordable because the, the the way it generally works uh, is that you would get like a, a disc, like a like a floppy disc, and um you would bring that to like a game store or something and you could put it in a machine and select a game and it would kind of like copy the game to the disc and allow you to play the game for a like it, it costs less than buying like a full cartridge release or something like that so it was it was it was a neat system fds is cool and uh so they, they released this game and then when it came time to release like they wanted, to, they wanted to release a Super Mario Brothers in America because they saw that it was so the first one was so successful. They were like, "Well, but Mario Two is super hard. Can Americans play this?" And so they're like, "What else do we have?" So they, you know, they were they reskinned this throwaway game that was like a marketing tie-in uh, as a Mario game, and it became, you know, so famous in America. And like, what what has been pointed out before, and uh, it oh, did you see the bird? The bird looks different. What does it look like? It's... It looks like a luchador. <laughs> it's a luchador. Oh! <laughs> this is a... Uh, it was a lot less impressive than, than the Mario 2 one. Uh, yes. So, I know that there are ways that you can sort of, uh... Be more successful with this. I just kind of push the button. I'm not good at slot machines. Yeah, I lose. Whatever. Uh, it's just, it's just green. Wait. I, wait, I don't... I, I, well, it's, okay, so anyway, yeah. To fin to finish the thought before I get into, uh, differences. Um, they sort of just reskinned this game, released it, and then, like, a lot of the things in this game became canon in the real world? So it's like, it was a game that was, uh, very much accepted by, uh, ooh, ooh, look at them, they're spooky. 
Why are they creepier when they're not smiling? Ugh. Like, like these these things have like a in the regular game have like a creepy st smile. Is it gonna chase me? Is is it gonna chase me? Oh, he's just hanging out. Do you not get chased in this version? Hmm. Okay. Oh no, there he is. Oh, I, I don't like him. Whoa. Okay. Um. Yeah. So like Nintendo wholeheartedly like accepts this game. It's just funny that it has a strange origin. Anyway, so. Why am I playing it? I'm playing it for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, I'm a big fan of Mario 2, like the American Mario 2. Um, growing up, I mean, I've, I've talked about it before on this channel, but growing up, I played a lot of it with my sisters. And um, it was it was just a big deal for me growing up. I love this game. And uh, two, as, as, is, as is my want on this channel, I like, I like to play games that other people don't play. I like to let people see things that maybe they wouldn't have access to otherwise. And so I was like, well, I'll play Doki Doki Panic. We'll see. So, um, yeah. And already I'm seeing, like, a ton of differences. And, like, like we've obviously seen several several differences in terms of, like, the sprite work. Um, and this character here, who is obviously not a Mario character. Um, although he does look kind of like Toad, to be perfectly honest. I never really thought about that, but Toad is basically like, uh... I guess, or, well, he's, he's got a, he's got a turban on, which it, I feel like is more of a, uh, Eastern Indian kind of thing, but he's dressed sort of Arabian, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, he looks different, <laughs> he's not a Mario character, and, uh, n no, like, none of the characters in this are Mario characters, and there, there's no, no reference to the Mario series, because, again, it wasn't a Mario game originally. Um, but there are also differences mechanically, like, we... We've already seen the fact that, um, you don't get to change your character, which is upsetting to me. Does that mean I have to play through the entire game with just one character? I'm, I'm, I'm very glad they changed that if that's the- Oh, there's the luch- there's the luchador. Hello, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm very glad they changed that because playing as just one character is lame, you know? Uh, I kind of was hoping to be able to switch the characters around and see how they all all moved, but maybe not. Um, also, this obviously looks pretty uh, pretty boring, all considered. Like, uh, I don't know if it's just because I'm used to the one on the uh, American Super Mario Brothers too, but that's that's kind of a uh, unimpressive to just have like a a green screen. Uh, also, these waterfalls are going crazy fast compared to the. Uh, Mario Mario 2 one, I, I do not think they went that fast. And the cherries don't move. There's like all sorts of little differences. And I love all the little differences. So we're playing this for one because I, you know, I like Mario 2 and, and for the other because I want people to see the differences because it's fun for me and hopefully it is for you. So there we go. Now I will go in here and I will get the heart and I will not pick up any of the cherries because I want to be able to have the star man. So, the Starman's there, though. That's, like, the only thing that feels Mario-like in this game, is that there's a Starman. I guess they just didn't want to come up with another representation of invincibility. And they just, they were like, oh, we got this star sprite, we use this. Um, and so another thing, another major difference mechanically is that you cannot run! for some reason. Um, like, if I hold down B and try to run, nothing happens. Ain't not, nothing doing. I'm holding it down right now, and I'm not going anywhere. It's very, uh, very strange. So, we're gonna try and do, do a full playthrough of this, and I'm gonna try not to warp at any point. Because even though there are plenty of ways that you can get through this game faster, uh, there are horrifying clown faces. Hello. Hello. How are you? Th are, these are the mushroom block. Oh, man. Boy, I'm glad they changed that one, too. These things are a little creepy. Like, I don't really have that big of a problem with clowns, but these things are kind of... I don't know about that. I'm a little strange. Um, yeah, the, the fact that you can't run is... Dip oh, and that, that's what... I already finished talking about that. Sorry, I'm a little frazzled by the clown faces. Um, yeah, I, I want people to be able to see as much of the game as possible. Although, I, again, I guess I'm going to have to play as the main... Just this guy the entire time and then these again why are they scarier when they're not like smiling in a malicious way just having them like stand there stoic is really intimidating Ugh. Ugh, i don't know that's weird it's weird I, I, like i'm curious to see 
what other sprites are changed uh, from the uh, the American release. Because for the most part, the enemies haven't changed too much. Like the shy guys are still shy guys. The spark or the uh, what are they called? Sparks or Sparkies? Let's say spark. Um, sniffets are the, sniffets are normal. Like most most of the things I've seen so far have been pretty normal. Oh, the the uh, the spikes aren't aren't uh, drilling. So in the uh, in the American version, though, those are like. They're like drills instead of just like spikes. Ah, it's so cool. I love the differences. Uh, the pow, pow is, isn't moving either. It, it seems like uh, there was a lot more... Um, what would you call it? Uh, it seems like the the nature of something f like animated or flashing or moving must have been a, a sort of a more premium thing in the uh, FDS version. Because it like... All of the things that were kind of like made to move, like the cherries or the uh, or the birdo egg or or stuff like that, don't. Oh, the, the weeds aren't moving either. I just noticed that. So, yeah. Anyway, we have come we've come up to our first boss. It is Mouser. He will throw bombs, and I will catch bombs, and then I will place bombs behind him, and he will explode. And I didn't time that very well. So let's try it again. It does that. I put that there, and he explodes. Oh, I almost exploded. Um, and we give him bomb, and he will love it. It is his favorite thing. He throws them all over the room. Why? Why does he throw them all over the room? Like this is this is one of those things. It's like there's no explanation for this. What is the association between a mouse? and explosives. Why does Mouser throw bombs? It's very strange. So that's gonna be it for the, uh, for this first episode. I'm gonna try to do a world of... Oh, okay, well... So now I can change characters? Okay, well, I, um... I guess in the next episode we will play as a new character. And, uh, yeah, we'll move on. But I'm gonna try and do, like, one, one world per, per episode. Hopefully I'll be able to get through all of it in a reasonable amount of time. But we'll see. Anyway, um, I'm Moy Chicken, this is Doki Doki Panic, and as always, thanks for stopping by.